Right, hello, it's Mark from Snooker Crazy. Uh, I've been asked a few times to show how to make a mushroom tip, or how to shape a mushroom tip. So we're going to have a little bit of a go today, and uh, see how we get on. So, one I prepared earlier. Now, this is... Let's have a quick look. That's a 9.9mm .9 ferrule. So pretty much a 10mm ferrule and I've used an 11mm tip. So basically find out the size of your ferrule size and then use a larger tip. If you can go a couple of mil I would say that that will give you a good good shape above. So what I've done there is I've done this earlier just to just to save a little bit of time. If you're not sure how to fit a snooker tip then go on one of my other videos they're already there. So you can see I would say pretty much there that's that's larger now what I've done is protected the shaft and the ferrule with some masking tape and I've also done a little there you go, a little line there so you can see where you start your sanding because when you do your sanding you're going round you want a, a good place to know where your start point is so what we're going to use now there's many things you can use uh, We'll give it a go with this actually, I've not done one with one of these, I generally do it with sandpaper and just do it straight off, but uh, you, you might struggle with that, you might not. There's a tungsten carbide sander, which they're okay, get a bit clogged, but they're not bad. And there's one with disposable bits of sandpaper in there. Um, you can get these on my website, so if you want one then obviously get one. But you can, so you can do this with a stand, a bit of sandpaper, you don't need anything technical, but We'll see if we can get it to go with this pencil sharpener. So I've not used one. I would be very interested to see how that would work. And I'll have an idea. And then we'll finish it with a bit of sandpaper. So, mushroom, obviously we want it to get just that, that circular shape over the top. And if it being wider than the ferrule, so the shape's going to go ferrule out to the larger tip. And then over with the mushroom shape. So first thing on this, it's an Elkmaster tip that's one, so it should be reasonably soft. So all I'm going to do is, probably can't see it that well, but you'll get a good idea, I'll try and talk us through it. Try and keep it even, and I tend to start at the mark if I can, so even if you can't see it's even, at least you've got a good idea that you've finished where you started. And then push it all the way down, I'm just going to try and take the edge off really, which might save a bit of time. Go back to where your start point is again and have a look. Yeah, a little bit. Let's see how we get on. This, this might work, but we'll see how much we can take off. We can just get that initial shape, then that would certainly save a bit of time. And even angle it yourself as you go. Good to have the masking tape all the way down. So if you're going to get something like that, you could actually touch the shaft. So so make sure you're pretty well protected. And I'm looking at the line as I go round there, so I can see where we're at. I just keep taking it off. You can see we're just taking that sharp edge off now. Until you're, you're happy with it, but... Getting that. I'll try and lean it over until you get to the point where you can't do it anymore. We can slowly, as we're getting to the end of this blade there, as you can see, we're cutting at the bottom of it. We're trying to move it over to get that semicircular shape as far as we can before we have to use something else. But not bad, I'll try and go down the bottom a bit, which means pushing it all the way down again and trying to get that bit a little bit shaped better. I tend to do a lot of these things just by eye because after a while you get a feel for it. So the aren't that good on this one but I think it's slowly getting there. So, now I've got different grades of sandpaper there ranging from 80 up to about 600. Um, to be fair I do use Probably a bit of 1200 just to take the little hairs off at the end, but now, as much as I've got an 80 grit paper there, you think, oh my god, I only skim, so it's 
it's just just like that. And it does bring the hairs up a bit, but it's just that initial bit. You don't have to do that. And you can use a, a 240. So when you're doing this, just be careful of the shaft. And I would just be just taking off the edge, starting where that line is, and moving around slowly. And that on this tip, that looks pretty good actually. So that's probably not a bad one for an elk. 240. So that's not bad at all. And try and start where the line is, and finish where the line is for your shape. <coughs> You're going to use one of these. Obviously it's circular, so you'll, you'll take the edges off, but considering what sort of shape you're going to have in a very small area there, it's going to be quite a cone, that's not going to give you that cone, this would have to be tighter. So it would take the edge off, so it's good for that, to give you that shape, but it's only going to take the edge off. Now you might feel, if you do a few of these, that, that that's for you, because you, you do get a better feel with it. And when you go down as well, say don't, don't forget, start of your line, skim your way round until you get into where you want. That's a nice big fat mushroom. Depends how you like it. Well, for the sake of the video, we'll do a 240. As I say, I like to do it at a bit of speed. When you're going down again, don't forget you've got your shaft there, so be careful. If you're only going to use this top bit, fold it in half, depending on how you feel, and that way you haven't got a great big bit hanging over that you might go round like that and catch your shaft if you still think you're getting close, put some more on, masking tape on there, until you get where you should be. I keep checking against, I mean I'm checking against the video so you can see it, this is not very easy for me to see, I would check against the light source and then you can see every little deviation, which is pretty good. My eyes aren't that good close up, as you can see I generally use one of these, so I would have a look in there. Um, let's just say for the sake of this, we'll, we'll do this. Now, let's just see. There we go. doing here is working from the top and spinning it and slowly going down over the edge so I'm slowly going like that because it overhangs the edge you're not actually going to do too much because it's an elk it's uh, impregnated with blue chalk so you can see what you're actually taking away and what you're not so you'll see when you get to the bottom bit and so when you get really level with the queue that's when you've got to be really careful that you don't start to hit any. You can see the sort of shape we're getting now. Now that's that's a massive mushroom tip. I don't like that. Um, I've seen some people play with it. Personally I don't like it. But it would sit over right and then you just clean it up a bit. So Take your grip, let's take the top of that off. There's different types of mushrooms and there's different gradients of how you go over. This is pretty aggressive taking this off, so we're going through the layer. There's only obviously one layer, we're probably getting through it a bit quicker. As long as you start your tip alright, you'll be alright. I'd always say go down so the pressure's always going through the shaft of the queue. If you, if you go upwards, I'm just going to try and take the tip off. But as I say, if you've a lot of tips, you get, get used to the strength of the tip and what you can and can't do with it. Just trying to give you a different shape of mushroom, really. Give you some uh, 
food for thought because that's an 11 mil out that's that's pretty tall so I'll try and give you a flatter one like some of those you see on the TV if you go on my website you'll see see the mushroom tip shapes on there there's probably about 30 or 40 different tip shapes uh, from memory I think probably the best one to look at for a, a flat mushroom is uh, is Mark King and that's reasonably taken that down quite a bit and now at this stage I would imagine you probably have to do that by eye I don't think this would be any good for us not really it's taken a slight bit off it takes the edge off so remember your line because you've got to try and get this even Maybe that might be quite big. Again, I'm going to try and shake this by eye, as I say, it's best light here at the moment. So if I can do it like that, then you'll certainly be able to do it without that. And I'm being quite aggressive on here just to show you that you can go quite low. Again, it's not perfect because I'm using an 80 grit and I would go down through the grits but again you're getting a, an idea of the shapes To me, still a big fat tip. Don't like them like that. Again, you might do. I would sand this under the microscope. I can see a lot better there. But you get, again, you get an idea. But let's just say that's too fat for you again. I'm just sanding this flat so I get the, the centre of the tip. And we'll go down way too much this time. Let's see what we end up with. So I'm not putting any effort into this. Some people think, oh, he's just wrecking the tip, but if you're skimming it, you're fine. As long as you go down through the grades of sandpaper afterwards. And Outmasters are actually a lot more robust than you might think. As long as you've stuck the tip on well, you'll be fine. So I'm not dragging this up or anything. I'm just skimming it across the top. Right, that's getting down quite a lot. Now again, <clears throat> give it a try with this because we said we would. Not, I don't think I'd use this to be honest in general. But, uh, so find your line again. And just take the edge off. Starting from the centre, you're going to go in like that in that sort of motion. Start from that line and then moving around. Try and get it even and then gradually move it round. Sort of fill your way. I'm getting a general idea, so I wouldn't. If this was a tip I was doing for someone, I wouldn't be doing it as quick as this, and I'd also do it so where I can see it, so the light's not great there. It's a 240. So if you're trying to use this, I don't think that's probably going to be 
be much better for you. No, it's not too bad. Not bad at all actually. Starting to get there now, so you can't quite see it. Hopefully, you can see it overhanging. Let's try and go in a bit. See if we can get that up. Folks, you're getting a general idea. So, you're, you're pretty much there, it's just using the last few grades of sandpaper. Now, when I get to this point, I'll probably start getting up to a 600, starting to give it a bit of a skim, start to get rid of all those hairs, not really taking much off at all here, actually nothing, I'm just trying to tidy the tip up a little bit. So I'm watching your ferrule again. If you do go over the ferrule then try a bit of 10,000 grit steel wool to start with, if not you've got the scratches on it and you're struggling. Get yourself some 600 grit that's slightly less than the height of your ferrule so you're not going over the wood. This is a bit big, but just for illustration sense, put it just underneath and then just pull it away. Spin the cue a bit, pull it away until eventually it's clean underneath, but also got rid of the scratches and then go back over with the steel wall. If you've got any glue left underneath there, when you actually you're doing your mushroom tip, because don't forget it's overhanging and you push it down, when you've got it down, try if you can. And get the get a bit of paper like that. Or even some tissue if you can get a straight edge on there. And try and get the straight edge and pull that underneath the tip. So pull it away. And that way you should get any excess glue out doing doing it like that. So say afterwards if you're really struggling to get a little bit of glue or a scratch then just pull it away. And it should get your nice sharp finish underneath. thousand grit you really want to get into it. I mean I do if I'm honest I do get the dusty bits of thousand and I like to finish the tips with that so there's absolutely nothing on it. It's just personal, you know you there's not really a side to this to burnish to be fair. Don't need to get into that. But you start to get an idea of the shape. You probably skim the edge a bit more. Just take this off and see if we can get a better, better look. It's uh, one of the older cues I've got, but you can just about see it, hopefully, overhanging. And then you just tidy up the shape as you go, but you've, you've pretty much got your mushroom shape there. So, just find. 
few seconds. Piece of chalk. See what it looks always looks better with a bit of chalk on there. So whether you have a, a large mushroom or a small one, always perfect. Just make sure you get that good finish, but it's personal as to what shape you want. All tips are personal really. If, you know, I heard someone say the other day that uh, the way they come out of the box is the standard way that all professionals use them. Well, go on the Snooker Crazy website and have a look and you'll find uh, that it's not. Right. So, so unusually large feral this one, but you can have a really good, get a really good idea there of the fact that it's overlapping. So, hopefully that'll give you a good idea of how you can sand. I've tried to do a few different methods and use a couple of the tools, but just to show that you can use it with a pencil sharpener, you can use it with just a bit of sandpaper and you just skim the edges. It's up to you. Either way will do it. And you just get the shape you want. And as long as at the end of it, if you've been aggressive with it to take the tip down a lot, then... Just make sure you finish off with some very sort of high grade sandpapers. I like to say I like the 1000, 1200 grit around around that really uh, and skim it and that, that should get rid of all the hairs. If you're doing a laminated tip it's a bit harder to get it to come off but it cuts better with a pencil sharpener um, to do that and it'll take a bit longer obviously but as long as you put it up against a decent light source, I'm looking at a door as I look over there, as long as you put it against a decent light source um, you should be able to get your shape right. So, you can zoom in on that. I probably tidied that a bit more underneath with the glue. Um, but you get a good idea. So, any questions, email me. Um, see you on the next video.